Hello! In this video, I made Fallout in Unreal Engine 5. You can toggle between first and third person mode, and you can even use the Vault Tech assisted targeting system to kill enemies. So, how did I end up with this project? The other day, my brother told me how there's a new TV series called Fallout based on the games. If you don't know, the Fallout series are post apocalyptic role playing games set in an alternate future while the world has gone through some nuclear devastation. In the game, some survivors seek refuge in massive underground shelters called vaults, designed to protect them from the nuclear devastation that was going on. In the games, players often take on the role of a vault dweller, someone born and raised within these sealed environments. However, circumstances force them out into the harsh, radioactive wasteland above. As these vault dwellers emerge, they find themselves in a world filled with mutated creatures, lawless societies, and the remains of the pre-war civilization. I remember playing the games ages ago, and they were fun, although I was a bit skeptical about watching the TV show. Normally, video game adaptations to TV or film suck, but it had good reviews and was number one on Amazon. So I decided to give the first episode a try, and I enjoyed it. I had nothing else to do that weekend, so I ended up watching the whole series and I enjoyed it. After I finished, this then got me thinking. I should probably try to recreate the Fallout games in Unreal Engine 5. On the following Monday, I opened up a blank Unreal Engine project which started with the third person template. So I had this third person character which could move around. My initial priority was replacing this third person character with a vault dweller. So I looked online for a free 3D model of a vault dweller although I couldn't find anything. Although, because I really wanted to kind of have a Vault Dweller character, I then opted to just commission someone to basically texture a model of a character to basically look like they were a Vault Dweller, and then I assigned number 23 on their back, because 23 is my favorite number. After getting this model, I then decided to rig it using Mixmo, and I found a bunch of animations for them, and then I set them up in Unreal Engine. If you want to learn how to rig any character to Mixmo and add them to Unreal Engine, I made a completely free tutorial about how to do this. I'll make sure it appears somewhere on the screen now if you want to learn how to do that. With the character now in place, I then decided I wanted to give them a weapon. Given the vast array of weapons in the Fallout series, I aimed to simplify this by offering the player a single pistol. I stumbled upon a suitable 10mm pistol model on Sketchfab and then incorporated it into my game. I set it up so my player could now aim with this weapon and the player would rotate to follow the gun when they were aiming. Additionally, I've made a tutorial about how to make an aim offset system. It should be coming to my channel soon. I'll make it appear somewhere on the screen if it's ready now. Next, I focused on ensuring the player could keep track of their health and their ammo for their weapon. I created a simple HUD and I made sure that everything was green so that it looked similar to Fallout. However, for now, I didn't code any logic behind the health bar or the ammo system. Now, let's talk about the Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy is a crucial device in the Fallout series, serving as the player's primary interface and tool for survival in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Essentially, it's a wrist-mounted computer worn by the player character that provides a variety of functions. For example, inventory management. The Pip-Boy allows players to manage their inventory, storing weapons, armor, item, and quest-related materials. It provides an organized view of what the player is carrying and allows for easy sorting and equipping of items. I wasn't going to code all of the features of the Pip-Boy, although I made it so my player could basically toggle whether they could equip their gun on or off with this Pip-Boy. Maybe I'll add some more functionality to it later. So this video is sponsored by me. If you're a fan of Unreal Engine and want the exact project files to this game and want to support me, Subscribe to my site, Unreal University. You'll get access to the project files and you'll get access to all of my premium Unreal Engine courses, which will teach you how to make full games such as an FPS game, a 2D platformer, melee combat system, and more. You can find a link to the project files and my website in the description of this video, or I'll make it appear somewhere on the screen now. With all of that said, let's get back to the video. The next thing I decided I'll make would be the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System. VAT for short. I'm just going to refer to it as VAT from now on. So, in Fallout, there is this VAT system. When activated, the VAT system 
momentarily pauses the action, allowing players to target specific body parts on their opponents with increased precision. Once the VAT system is engaged, players can select individual body parts of their targets, such as the head, torso, arms, or legs. Each body part has different effects when targeted, affecting the enemy's combat capabilities or overall health. For example, targeting the head may result in critical damage or potentially even instant death, while targeting limbs can cripple them, reducing the enemy's mobility or effectiveness in combat. To get started creating this VAT system, I needed to have an enemy, so I headed to Sketchfab to look for a model, and to my luck, I found this Fallout Ghoul model, just what I needed. In order to make sure that I could split off its limbs, I went into Blender and chopped it up into many different parts like its head, arm, and so on. I then rigged the model using Mixamo and downloaded a couple of animations for it. I then set up a very simple enemy character. It was at this point that I realized Fallout was actually a first person game. I hadn't played it in so long that I just forgot this. It was just that during certain cutscenes or death scenes, sometimes you could view your character. And when you're watching the show, you're watching from a third person perspective. So I kind of just assumed it was third person. Now the player can toggle between first and third person. To achieve this effect, I attached a camera to my player's face. Although sometimes the camera would clip through the face mesh and it would look weird. To help solve this, I simply hit my player's face bone when they were in first person mode. Okay, now that I had done this, it was time to finish the VAT system. I wanted to ensure that the player could kill the enemy first before I made it. So I made a simple health system for my enemy and made it so the enemy could be killed by the gun. Then, for a bit of polish, I added some VFX to appear when you shot the enemy and when you hit the ground in general. Now, let's dive into how I specifically made the VAT system. I added this sphere around the player, which would detect when an enemy was within a certain distance of them. Then, when the player hit the Q button, it would switch from their camera to the camera of the nearest enemy if they were within my player's sphere. Additionally, I added five different cameras around the enemy. These would later be used for the VAT system depending on what limb you shot off. Next, I made this 3D widget which would appear in a 3D space. I added a button to this widget for each body part of my enemy, the head, the torso, arms and legs. Then when you go next to an enemy and you press the Q button, this 3D widget will basically appear on top of the enemy. Now, when this 3D widget appears, depending on what body part that you selected, it will determine which body part is removed. For example, if you selected the head, I spawned some blood where the head would be, then I made it play the death animation and swap to a different camera. If you selected an arm, it would blow off and so on for the different body parts. And so far, the player could kill the enemy, although the enemy could not kill the player. So I made this system where the enemy would play an attacking animation when it got close to the player. My enemy had a box collision around its left arm. This would be turned off by default. Although during certain frames, when my enemy was attacking, I turned the collision on this box on. And if my player was in that box collision when the enemy was attacking, I made sure that they were damaged. Then if say my player dies, I made it so it would switch to a death camera and then reload the level. To ensure that my player would not run out of ammo, I created a simple ammo box where my player could basically pick up and collect ammo. So at this point, I had now designed a lot of my game. The next thing I needed was a post-apocalyptic environment, as that's the type of environment that Fallout is set in. I'm not really a designer, so I headed over to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and I found this post-apocalyptic environment for like $10 and it looked like it fit my game. So I purchased it and added it to my level. Right now, my enemies kind of just stood there. So I added some code so that they would randomly roam around the map and not just stand there. I placed my player at the start. And with this, I had kind of created a mini version of Fallout in Unreal Engine. Check out some of the gameplay.
So, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, if you want the product files for this game, make sure you subscribe to my website, Unreal University. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. You'll get the complete project files for this game, although it won't include the environment as that's a separate paid marketplace asset. And you'll get access to a bunch of different Unreal Engine courses like how to make a 2D platformer game, an FPS game, and more. Okay, with all that said, bye.